You know, we're talking with the Congressman Ron Paul who ran for uh, the presidency. You going to run again? No, that, uh, I haven't made that decision. I haven't thought too much about that. That's uh, a, a while to go yet. I haven't said absolutely not, but uh, I, I right now I have no plans to do it. When you ran, did you uh, think you could get elected? Not really. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, and I used to kid, I said, that's the risk you take when you put your name out there. You know, you can sure. get elected. When I first ran for Congress, I was talking the same way, and I thought it would be virtually impossible to win even a congressional seat if you were going to defy the status quo and then promise no goodies for your district and only promise to limit government and try to restore a free society, that there wouldn't be an audience for that. So to my surprise, there was. And uh, right now, I'm a bit surprised that uh, as many people are paying attention as they are right now. But the country's in desperate straits, and maybe looking toward a, a freedom philosophy is, is the right thing to do. Kind of interesting how enormously popular you are, particularly with. Um, it's it's interesting on this basis how enormously popular you are with young Republicans and others, and yet not with the Republican establishment. Is that because they don't like your foreign policy views or what? Yeah, I think you know the older people. They have trouble, you know, being objective. They get locked in the place, and they're part of the the special interests. Uh, and young people have always been generally more attracted to principle, and they like consistency, and they're more idealistic. And and they're also, the young people right now are facing a, a major problem. It isn't like when the baby boomers were moving into adulthood, everything was doing pretty well, and the country was still wealthy, and jobs were available. Now the jobs aren't available. The country is poor. Wars continue. Deficits have to be paid for. and. Uh, personal liberties are under attack, perpetual war exists, and young people say, hey, what's the answer? And uh, freedom is the answer, and freedom does bring people together. Not only am I pleased with the young people being attracted to this, there are some polls that show that uh, even independents are very interested in this, and even progressive Democrats who like the idea of protecting personal choices and and are more supportive of uh, of a less aggressive foreign policy. So this, these these ideas really do bring people together, and uh, I think young people recognize that more so than those who have been locked into the establishment. Your, Rand, uh, your son Rand feel pretty much as you do about everything? Yeah, I, I think so. It's hard to have strong disagreements, you know, uh, within a family, but we have our disagreements, and uh, certainly on tactics we would have disagreements. But the basic thrust of limiting government and balancing budgets and have free markets and property rights uh, and uh, in, along these lines, I think we would have strong agreements. The uh, Obama's, uh, I guess, it's accurate to describe it as heavy-handed relations with Israel, what you view of that? Well, I, I haven't really noticed any really heavy handedness. I don't think there's any doubt about uh, what our country would do, uh, you, you know, if, if uh, Israel has a problem. And uh, I, I think sometimes, uh, you know, these disagreements are more superficial than they really are. It's a Push dog and pony show or? If push comes to shove, you know what will happen. But uh, I'm sure there's people in the administration that are concerned that uh, the Israelis may act unilaterally and go in there and start a war with Iran, which would not help the world, wouldn't help Israel, it wouldn't help Iran, it wouldn't help uh, the Americans. I mean, it would be a disaster. But, you know, there's always this threat that this could happen, but there's also the threat that we'll condone it, too. So, I mean, I guess it would be horrible. Finally, uh, Congressman Paul, the president's going to Wall Street Thursday to talk to them. What should he say to them? He, he shouldn't even probably go, but if he's going to go, uh, what I'd like to hear a president say is, you know, we believe in free markets. We don't believe regulations can compensate for an out-of-control Federal Reserve system. The regulations should come through the rules of the marketplace. If you mess up and you get into uh, a place where you're bankrupt, you should declare bankruptcy and get out of the way, and nobody bails you out. And if you commit fraud, you ought to go to jail. But uh, regulations, per se, are not the answer. The SEC 
is actually a farce. I mean, they were they were created to prevent the problems of uh, you know Goldman Sachs. Uh, the information about Goldman Sachs has been written in books uh, since it occurred, and yet here uh, politically they come and they explain, oh no, it's all Goldman Sachs' fault. Well, well, it, Goldman Sachs is responsible, and uh, they have been treated in a special way, but. We need somebody to say that the marketplace can regulate a lot better than the SEC and uh, and, and more government regulations. We well, need to regulate the Federal Reserve is what we need to do. Congressman Paul, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.